paradigms. Relationships between these Arabian genera um, proposed based on morphology. So, insects are one of the largest groups of animal life, um, and moths, butterflies, and moths, Lepidoptera, made up 16% of insect diversity. Lots of moths. Moths are herbivores and can cause um, significant damage to um, agriculture and forestry, um, but they're also largest in the span. So most herbivine moths use uh, Crypsis for defense against visual predators. They also have a pretty highly developed sense of hearing, um, which they use to detect the hunting calls of bats, and they can take evasive action. Um, some herbivine moths have this uh, bright striking coloration, striking bright coloration, which is revealed when the moths are disturbed. And this is thought to give the moths an extra chance to escape. So some studies have been done on uh, underwing moths, um, so the pink hindwings over there, and the startle responses of the birds. And then other studies have examined uh, the hearing abilities of these black horse moths. Um, but we don't know much about how um, these predator defense adaptations evolve in the subfamily, because we don't know too much about how the moths are related to each other. So until some uh, until the recent molecular phylogenetic work that's come out in the past two were classified under a scheme developed in the early 20th century um, without little regard to how uh, the moths were actually related to one another. Additionally, um, most of these early researchers didn't really get to examine too many moths from tropical areas where the bulk of their biodiversity occurs. So during the 20th century, uh, some researchers attempted to form groups of genera South America and North America. So 
the other sequence data would be anchored hybrid enrichment with a um, protip specific to the super family of bonds. And we analyze the sequence data under um, concatenated and uh, species tree approaches. So our overall results have uh, a lot higher support, and uh, the Aravine moss most most general fall into two main clades, which I um, call here clade A um, and clade B. And aside from those, the two groups outside of those are the acanthalophini and the cyphnine. So the acanthalophini is sister to the remainder of the Arabines. Uh, we had six of these taxa in our analysis, and coming from Southeast Asia, Africa, and South America. And the cyphnine was represented by a single genus from Southeast Asia. So most of clade A is from uh, North America or the New World, um, except for two genera in the Parasomina, which came from, uh, which were collected in Africa. So clade A consists of two um, subclades, which I term clade C and clade D. Um, this clade C contains a type genus of three tribes, Oposomina, Homopterina, and Thermosomina. Clade D contains the type genera of the Urea cyanide and the hypogramina, as well as some genera that are currently clade to the Monopterina. Clade D is one of the larger, or contains the most taxa in our study and consists of two main clades, P e and F. Clade E um, consists of the Penismina and Melbatina clade. And the hypochorinic and catacolinic carbine trichotinic clade. Clade F contains the homotophorinic and phogomionic clade, which is mostly Southeast Asian but contains a single North American genus in our analysis. Uh, the remainder of clade F has um, the Arabine, uh, Euclidean, and then the Lydian and Kirchianic clade. So support for the overall phylogeny um, was robust with most nodes um, with above 85% bootstrap support. Um, there was overall congruence between all um, between the different phylogenetic approaches used, and the placement of the Arabina was the only group that moved uh, considerably between the analyses. So I'm going to then uh, discuss some of the uh, support for these earlier morphology based hypotheses that we found over the course of the study. Um, the Parasomini um, clade contains two genera, um, which were um, Parasyma and Heteropalpia, which were grouped together by Berio um, when studying African genera and formed a group of, that included these two genera, which we included in our analyses, um, but they grouped these two North American genera. Melopatini um, in our analysis is supported um, by two prior morphological studies, um, one by Rissards um, based off of adult morphology of the United States genera, and then another based on larval morphology by Crump in 1996. The Catacolani Audiani Tacosani clade um, gives support to a uh, hypothesis proposed by Mitter and Silverfine. 1988 for the United States genera on the basis of similarities in the female genitalia morphology. The genera um, included in our hypochorionic clade um, match a group of genera proposed by Berio, uh, 1965 um, for the United States genera on the basis of a reddish coloration on the underside of the hind wings and abdomen and scaling on the legs. The Cosaitanic clade, um, recovered in our analysis, supports a group of genera um, formed by Holloway 2005 on the basis of genitalia morphology and wing shape. Um, the study by Zahir et al. 2012 grouped a colorful big line genus of moth, Cosaitia, um, from New Guinea of these genera. The Opusinae Guacalinae clade um, was proposed by Holloway 2005 on the basis of adult morphology, 
united the genera and uh, these two tribes under the Obi Sinai, but divided it into two genus groups based on pupil and genitalia morphology. So some future directions I'd like to take um, our research on Arabine Monson is to study the evolution of this um, startle coloration, which is uh, most probably the most charismatic aspect of Arabine moss, which it seems to show up in a wide, throughout the subfamily and in different ways. And it'd be pretty interesting to see what constitutes startle coloration in this group of moss. Another potential direction is to study um, the evolution of host plant preferences, um, how they relate to some of the economic impacts that some Arabine moss have. Any questions? 